Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. To a stream with a person who's very awake. A stream with a person who did not sleep. No, no. A very awake person. Yes, you're getting it. A person who's very awake and has never slept before. Not once. A nap? Never heard of her. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Let me know if the music's too loud. Or if it's just right. I know, some people sleep weird, but you know, we're not here to judge. Couldn't be me, never slept, never slept before, so. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> um, no, you know what's silly? Yeah, I fell asleep. Yeah, what are you gonna do about it? Yes, I fell asleep. And what is almost worse is I could feel it happening. I could feel myself drifting away. And I was aware enough that it was happening that I said, don't gasp at me. It's true, I slept, okay? I could feel it happening. Picked up my phone and set an alarm. I was like, I'm gonna fall asleep. I feel it, I feel it happening. It's happening, I can feel it. So I'm gonna set an alarm because I don't trust myself. I'm gonna set an alarm. Clark fell asleep at like eight. I was like, I'm about to fall asleep, I, I, power nap. Those work sometimes, right? Power nap, I'll sleep for 20 minutes. But just in case at the 20 minute mark, I feel like garbage. I'll set a second alarm for 40 minutes. A, du a, a dubby power nap, if you will. Twice the time, twice the energy. Okay. <laughs> 20 minutes goes by, the alarm goes off. I wake up and I think what everybody who's ever set two alarms thinks, I don't have to get up right now. I don't have to wake up right now. I set a second alarm. I set a second alarm. Why would I get up? So I immediately go back to sleep. So the problem, the problem was not setting two alarms, okay? Two alarms, we've all done it. Six alarms, who gives a shit, right? Um, the problem was not setting two alarms. The problem was when the first alarm happened, I still knew my whole government name. I still knew what country I lived in. I still knew that I was a mother, a wife, a friend, a daughter. But at the 40 minute mark, <laughs> at the 40 minute mark, you could ask me any question in the world. I'm gonna be like, huh? You could ask me anything, dude, and I would have known nothing about myself. Nothing. I woke up like, why, why is the technology, why is technology yelling? Who, where am I? What's happening? And it was in that state that I fell back to sleep. <laughs> And it's in that state that I fell back to sleep again. So, turned out 20 minutes. I was aware of who I was, but was too tired. 40 minutes, I knew nothing, no questions could be asked of me. Also tired. The one hour mark, 
Still too tired. Also wasn't awake. I <laughs> didn't wake up at the one hour mark. One hour, I don't know her. The one hour and 20 minute mark? Wide awake, knew everything, horrified with myself. Shot out of bed. <laughs> so that's who you got. Okay, you got the one hour, one hour and 20 minute Duger. Okay, that's who, that's who wound up here today. <laughs> Shout out to Focus Entertainment. I was supposed to be live playing your game so long ago. And I appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So here we are. <laughs> don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep because I've missed this stream. And I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> Somebody was asking when you are sponsored to do a stream at a certain time. Is there ever wiggle room there or no? It really depends. Um, if you say you're gonna be live with a sponsored segment of any kind, um, at a certain time, you really want to be, you want it to be happening at the time that you said, right? So it's not ideal that I, that I overslept. It's not good. I do apologize for that. Um, but it, it also depends on like what the sponsored stream is. Sometimes it's like, why aren't they live? Oh, they were just a little late. Okay, that's fine. And sometimes it's like, what's happening? We needed this to happen at this time, you know? And um, it, it, it entirely depends. Some, some people want more correspondence about tardiness. Sometimes they just check in later to make sure it happened, you know? So, yes. Absolutely. I, I, I always, if I am super late and I was supposed to be doing a co-op something, something, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. Yeah, true. I did make myself quiffy. Quiffy? Who is that? Is that, um, is that decorated musician, Jared Lawson? The people who are related to him must be so proud. Couldn't be me. <laughs> he's, no wait, he's famous. <laughs> What? Malika! Hey, buddy. How are you? Super de duper good, I hope. <laughs> oh, 
I was thinking, Moika, I was thinking about you today. It's like I summoned you. <laughs> Yeah. Is it still cold? It's actually fine. Um, Clark said the cutest thing today when we were stepping outside to, to drive to school. We stepped outside and we were all bundled up, you know, but we walked outside and she goes, wow, the air is very soft today. And, and it was such a, it was such a perfect way to put it. We stepped outside and the temperature outside was like, just the absolute perfect temperature there was there was no wind it was just like a nice like lightly chilly temperature outside it just it just felt like like so comforting she was like oh it's so soft out <laughs> does she have an english accent oh yeah but you know what's funny i think she has an english accent this is still the case, which is so weird to me. Um, when we first moved here, I would say, yeah, Americans think she sounds really English and English people think she sounds really American. And I would say, that'll change though. It's not always gonna be that way because she's going to school with English kids, <laughs> right? She's going to school with kids that have a whole ass English accent, so it's, it's, her English accent is gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger. But when people meet her, they still go, where is her accent from? So to English people, she still sounds extremely American. And I remember, um, uh, there were a couple of people that Sam introduced me to when we first started dating, where he'd go, yeah, um, they only lived in America for a little bit. They live most of their life in England, but they still, they sound so American. You'll see. And then I'd meet this person and go, they sounded very English to me. <laughs> they did not sound American at all to me. And he'd go, that doesn't make any sense because they sound just American to us. So it really does depend on on your ear, um, what you're used to hearing, I think, you know? Um, are you around exclusively accents from the United Kingdom? The Americanisms of how she talks stand out so much. And, and again, when she comes to America with me, everyone's like, oh, her accent is so cute. Yeah, her vowel sounds are extreme, you know, cause uh, the American, the American pronunciation of vowels is so harsh. It's so twangy sounding. Um, we talk about that a lot in my singing lessons. My singing teacher talks about that all the time because we'll be singing a song and she'll be like, you just need to let, you just need to sing this with just your normal accent. <laughs> and I'd be like, I think I am. But she would explain that like normally with her students, she would encourage them to almost like emulate American vowel sounds. And then for me, I would listen to English people sing a song and, and start emulating the way I'm used to hearing a song, right? And she'd be like, no, no, no. Let it, let it sound twangy. <laughs> but it doesn't sound twangy to me, right? A twang to me is like, darn tootin', right? But, but my accent sounds twangy here. Ye yeehaw, indeed. Y'all, shouldn't I? Yeah.
Are there habits she's picked up from you that stand out to people over there? Habits? I don't think so. I don't think so. We've recently had to, um, uh, she got told off at school for saying, oh my hell. <laughs> And so we had to revisit the conversation of like, there are some things that daddy and I aren't gonna give a shit about, okay? You can say, oh my hell, I don't care. <laughs> but, but know your audience, right? We now know, you now know with full awareness, you can't say that at school. They don't like that, right? So we've now learned our vocabulary needs to be different at school versus at home. It's just like when you go to Nanny's house, there are some things that are okay at Nanny's house and things that are not okay at Nanny's house, right? Yeah, literally I was like, just say, oh my heck, dude. So she started saying, oh my heck, and so far she hasn't gotten in trouble. <laughs> Uh, people don't, yeah, people don't like little kids saying hell or, um, like, oh, hell. They don't like that. Um, they don't like little kids saying, oh, my God, either. Uh, that's still, even, even amongst people that aren't religious at all, for whatever reason, it, it stands out as, like, a, a more, like, adult phrase, you know? It probably culturally, it depends culturally on, you know, because there are lots of different places that speak English. So it probably depends, but um, everywhere that I've ever lived, that has, that has been the case, yeah. Um, after I got attacked by the goose, I was trying to come down the stairs. My bruises are looking a lot better, by the way. I was trying to come down the stairs, um, and my leg hurt so bad when I was trying to bend it. And I went, oh, shit. And Clark turned around and goes, mommy, oh, shit, what? <laughs> I was like, it's just my leg, baby. And she was like, oh, your poor leg. But hearing her go, oh, mommy, oh, shit, what? Made me laugh so hard. It, like, fixed it. I was healed instantly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on. Let's see. Let's see how it's looking. Yeah, it's looking a lot better. Look. So this is where he this is where he clamped on. <laughs> These are the bruises. They were a little bit bigger. They were a little bit bigger on the first day. I did got yeah, our goose our goose. That man, he and I are fighting. Okay? He thinks I'm out to steal his lady. He's right. <laughs> I wasn't before, but now I am. Yeah, I'm beefing with the goose. My auntie's getting baby lambs for the farm. She's keeping them in the house for bottle feeding. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you live anywhere near your auntie, but baby lambs, Oh, they're like, they're like little wobbly dogs. They're so cute. I can't, I cannot get enough of the lambs. <laughs> I can't get enough of them. The last couple of days when I was really sad, literally I would just go into the field and just hug a lamb. Oh my God, it's healing. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. They're so cute.
Yeah, we got two sheep. And then um, my sister-in-law, I was explaining, uh, works in like animal husbandry. She works for like a major like genetics company out here and stuff. Um, but she was basically on site at a farm and was, and was offered mismatched lambs because um, she was talking about how she had just bought two sheep and um, they were starting to get settled in and whatever. And the farmer that that I guess she was working with at the time was like, I've got two mismatched lambs, which basically means their patterning isn't what people are looking for. Um, so he's like, I've got two mismatched lambs. They're they're bottle feeding right now. Um, if you're interested, and my sister-in-law is so weak, she was like, Yes, I'll take that, and literally just came home with two baby lambs. Um, and at first we were like, oh my God, how are we going to take care of them? But they, they have been so fun and so cute and ev everybody's having a great time with them. It's, it's been best decision. It's been great. <laughs> yes. They are like little dogs. They just, they just wobble run after you. They're so cute. Uh, I love them. Sheep are so cute. I know. I know, dude. They're adorable. I love them. Yeah. And, you know, the more that we ramp, the more people are like, and so now I guess, I guess next step is what? A cow? <laughs> I'm like, no, don't say that. Don't say that. Because I love cows. Don't say that, dude. And then in a few short months, their heads will become empty and they'll officially be sheep. Yeah, that's what's funny is I, as a kid, we, we, I had never, I think this is my first time ever spending time around like baby sheep, like lambs. I think I've only ever spent extended time around adult sheep and they truly have nothing going on in there. <laughs> There's nothing going on in there, dude. They're just va whoosh, vacant inside. Um, so it's so funny to me to spend like all this time with these baby lambs because they're so active. They're so like, they just run around everywhere. They make the cutest noises. They just let you snuggle them for as long as you want. They're adorable. When sheep turn eight months old, they lose all brain activity. They bounce and raw wobble their brains free. Oh God. Um but yeah, I was saying on stream, I didn't I didn't realize. Uh I I know nothing about um color patterning on animals, any of that shit. I, I don't know anything about that world. Um, I was explaining it on stream like that there are shiny versions of animals. Um, so when my sister-in-law was explaining like, yeah, um, people aren't really interested in these ones because their patterning is so mismatched. They don't have the pattern that people want in this type of sheep. And there's like a perfect pattern on a sheep that's basically like their shiny pattern. And I guess this is true for like any animal, <laughs> which is so weird. Um, that there's like specific places they want the, the like patterning to be in. So these sheep are white and black, right? They want like the black spots to be in hyper specific places. They have to be just the right size. It's weird. And if they are, then you have the shiny sheep. You have the shiny version of that sheep. And that, that shit is worth thousands of dollars. If you get the, if you get the shiny sheep, you know, <laughs> like it's so weird. 
Yes, they shiny hunt sheep. They do. So if you have a sh if you if a if a lamb is born to you, <laughs> if you open the trading card pack of life and, <laughs> and a baby lamb is born to you that has the perfect patterning, you are then encouraged to go to shows to show off your shiny sheep. And if that sheep de is determined by judges to have the perfect patterning, it will go on a registry and people all over the world will go on sheep eBay looking for the shiny sheep and be like, holy shit, there's a shiny sheep in England. At the end, you know, this is, it felt, it felt, there was a part of me, it felt like, you know when somebody's like, I just don't understand why you would want to watch another person play a video game, and then somebody crawls out of the earth and is like, it's the same as watching football, right? That's, <laughs> that's how it feels to me. I'm like, this is just, this is, ma these are magic cards. These are living, breathing magic cards. It's the same. We're all the same. Humans are just the same. We're all just fucking nerds. <laughs> you don't know what you're a nerd about until you talk to the person. But it's the same. It's just the same shit. <laughs> Humans love collectibles. I guess so. <laughs> what do they do with the shiny sheep? Do they train them in battle? <laughs> um, I think the hope, if you buy the shiny sheep for billies, right? If you buy the shiny sheep, you are hoping that that shiny sheep will then give birth to more shiny sheep. But I guess the fun, exciting, flavorful element of this is that almost never happens. <laughs> shiny sheep normally don't have baby shiny sheep. They're shinies. That's, that's just not how genetics work, right? So, um, <laughs> even, yeah, even if you breed two shinies, it's really low percentage possibility that you're going to give birth to another shiny, you know? We've all spent time breeding Chocobo, okay? We know how this works. You have to pull the link cable out during trading. And then you want and then you clone the shiny, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, uh, I've learned a lot about it. We have adorable mismatched sheep that people didn't want. <laughs> They're so cute. I love them. <laughs> I 
Anywho. Shall we play a game? <laughs> Shall we play a game? Now that I've educated you all on um, real life Pokemon trading. <laughs> Let's talk more about sheep. The sheep meta game. Mm hmm. Hello and welcome to Sheep Talk. I'm your host, Sheeper Sutherland. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Sheep Enders. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. More, more ideas, more ideas, gang. That's me, shh, go away. <gasps> Oopies. I had the wrong panel image underneath. Disgusting. There we go. There we go. Saved. Ha ha. Ha ha. All righty. So, gang, we're going to be playing Banishers, Ghosts of New... Eden. I almost said New England. Ghost of Eden. Ooh, it's loud. She's loud. <laughs> no shirts. Yeah. You get it. <laughs> um, this is a don't nod game. It's, a, it's an action RPG made by the Don't Nod team. Um, and as you might expect... Oh, let's read this really quick. Banishers is set in a place and era known for their proverbial intolerance. Some situations of abuse depicted through... Oh, shoot! What did it say? Tell me, sir. We'll never, yeah, we'll never know now. Uh, I assume it was, it was trying to say this is set in a, in a time period that might reflect, um, you know, racism, etc. cetera. Uh, <clears throat> Here, let's see if we reopen it. Let's see if it says it again. Yeah, those are Ultros warnings. Oh, sure, accept. Sure. Night mode. Ooh, loud sounds will be quieter and dialogue clarity will be raised. Sure. Let's play subtitles and speaker names. Sure, let's turn a subtitle background on. I was wondering if it would let us reread the content warnings. Okay. Yes. Let me reopen it and we'll see if the content warnings show up again. 
Oh my gosh, you found it. <laughs> right as I closed it. Banishers is set in a place in era known for their proverbial intolerance. Some situations of abuse depicted throughout the game tie into the oppression experienced by visible and invisible minorities during these times. While suggested by historical events, this game is a work of fiction and liberties have been taken for dramatization purposes. Got it. Um, she's open again. So then, banishers, warnings. Okay. Uh, okay, so violence, gore, racism, and classism. I'll just also say language, because I assume. <laughs> okay. Slavery, abuse, sexual content, and flashing images. Thank you. Boom, we've done it. Okay. And religious weirdness. Okay, okay, okay. Focus if you're watching this right now. We do this with every game, not, not just this game. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Fantastic. If you want to have a better idea of what's going on in this game, um, warnings wise, we now have a warnings list. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna hop in. Again, this is um, an action RPG. Made by Don't Nod, so what I was going to say before the, before the content warning blurb popped up was, uh, as with all of their games, it is very, like, your choices affect the game. Um, the, the things you decide to do and the choices that you make will have an impact on the rest of the game. Uh, I don't know anything about what the story is like or what those choices are so that I could go in blind. So we're just going to... We're, uh, we're gonna hop in and see what it's like together, okay? Let's go. Oh no. Do I want... Do I want to be mouse and keyboard for this? <laughs> I might want to be mouse and keyboard. Let's see. The reticle is making me think. Okay, select difficulty for players who wish to enjoy the game with a forgiving combat challenge. For players who want to focus on the narrative, players who want to enjoy a balanced experience of story and combat. We'll do that just to get a, an idea. And as always, you can do exclamation point sponsored in chat and there's an adorable link there that you can click if you want to check this game out again. The ship lies at anchor off New Eden. Okay. A tender stands at your disposal. I dreamed of clouds. Great long fluffy bastards, low over the sea. I dreamed of the abyss in the darkest reaches of the deepest ocean.
And a good day to you, my love. And a good day to you, too. Are we in New England? <sighs> Welcome to America. Something is bothering you. Charles's letter. What of it? The ghost must be uncommonly dangerous, or he would banish it himself. Then they shall charge him double. <sighs> I'm serious. If the Reverend needs help, this can be no easy business. Red, you best be ready. Now be careful, Master Duarte. Apprentice stands ready to serve. Come on, Atea, we need to go. Night be. <laughs> Rory McWraith, gallant to the last. Life to the living, death to the dead. Consider our lovers, Antea and Red. The greatest banishers I ever knew. Life to the living, we say, and death to the dead. It is not so simple. Since the dawn of humanity, the dead have lingered. Dead as alive, we are complex and emotional beings. Many and tangled are the ties that bind. Since the beginning of memory, banishers have fought to sever those ties. Death is but a trifle. It comes to us all. To haunt or be haunted. There lies the true horror. I, Charles Davenport, should know it. The haunting of New Eden scared me to death. I dearly wish I had not begged my friends to come and lift the curse. If this is June, I'd hate to see January. I wanted to freeze my backside off in the summertime. I'd have stayed in Scotland. London wasn't much better. Look at it. It's cold as a bishop's arse, and twice as white. I don't mind saying it, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Charles wasn't lying. New Eden is cold as death. You may well be disappointed. Is it too quiet? I can turn everything up. Be at the tavern with a hot grog or two. <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. All righty. Dialogue is maybe a little too quiet. Okay, let's see. Everything's up pretty high, I think. Oh, the soundbar. Oh, use this option if you play with built-in TV speakers. I don't know. We'll see if that helps. <laughs> I weary of long, boring sea voyages to grim, faraway lands. I can't remember the last time we did something else than work. After this, we should set sail somewhere warm and safe. The dead don't linger. There's no such place. But it's not a bad idea. Have I mentioned how grim this place is? I heard you the first time. 
but I don't disagree. Tell me if that's better. show up and everybody's dead dude i think we can get through here sure let's go traipsing through the rotten falling down house looks steady enough Keep going. I'll find a way to meet up with you. Over eager apprentices. I can break my way through here. figured it out <laughs> I was like my mouse never feels like tangled up like it does right now so it must be tangled up that would make the most sense that would be the conclusion that would uh, match up with what I'm thinking right now They're teaching us to play, chat. Oop. No, I don't want to quit nothing. I'm fixing stuff, okay? I don't want to quit nothing. We're fixing stuff. Zipped. That's better. Oh, you do not belong here. Everything all right down there? Just a sneaky wanderer. You? Same, but I managed. Are these specters watching the road? Maybe, but are they keeping people outside town? Or are they keeping them in? <laughs> it's got nothing to say, dude. Yeah. 
I can't bust through. Oh, more wanderers. Behind you. My man's does magic. Let's go. Yeah, as easy as falling off a box. Tell how long these people are dead. The original settlers, perhaps. Whoever, this doesn't bode well. Your weapons fills the banish gauge. When the banish gauge is full, press E to banish your Time target. to leave for good. Ah, oh, I also do magic. Yeah. What's this? Perhaps these words will be lost in time, but I must write them. The date, I cannot say. I know it is the month of June, in the year 1695. I thought we would be safer in Providence. I thought we would finally see the children again and the golden wheat fields would ring with their laughter. Their mother now lies dead and I shall join her soon. Something insidious walks the roads. Terrible spirits took us. New Eden is cursed. You who reads this now, I tell you, run. These people left New Eden town just a few days ago. What exactly is going on here? And their ghosts were mad. I don't know how this world works. Maybe all ghosts are mad. Whoa. Took his dust. That org is bad. There for he the is. Case. Situation's worse than you thought. Let's wait to hear what Charles has to say. Empty docks in a growing settlement. Never a good sign. Are the town selectmen sitting on their arses? Isn't that what selectmen do? When we get to town, we may need to split up to cover more ground. You may count on the most responsible student a banisher could have. We'll see if you remember some of your teaching. If you're up for it. Always. Huzzah! You're welcome in committee. Let's find the inn. Let's find Charles. It'll be good to see Charles and Esther again. <laughs> Would you a lecture on the sanctity of marriage? Uh... <laughs> Esther wouldn't dare. And we don't need a piece of paper to keep us together. Uh, I remember you an area her. of investigation. Look for an inn. The inn. This way. This must be the inn. Anything for me to yoink? Hell yeah, there is. Don't worry about it, darling. Let's go. Hmm. 
Charlie, we're here. Your prayers are answered. Poor as a drink. Finally. Banish it. Please, come in. As it is gold, your serving woman may sit while we talk. I'm the help. She's the boss. You're not Charles. Let's go, Red. My name is Antea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McWraith. Good day to you, sirs, madam. Now, where's Charles? Minister Davenport said help was on its way. I assume. Keep digging, Fairfax. Good day. Pennington, captain of the train band. This here is Thick Skin Newsmith. We're the selectmen. <laughs> What's left of us? Why is Charles not here? We're sorry for your loss. We'll do what we can for his widow. The Reverend is dead. When? How? A terrible tragedy. Though our faith sustains us, we are still very much in shock. Our shock at Reverend Davenport's killing is so great that we must sit here in comfort, losing precious time. As governor of the colony of New Eden, it is my responsibility. Oh, look at us, sat here waiting to meet the same fate. We could all be miles away by now. You lot do what you want. I intend living. The esteemed select woman can be <coughs> brusque. Forgive her. And rest assured that her aptitudes far outweigh her manners. Or lack thereof. Her point still stands, Fairfax. Sitting here, doing nothing, we are as lambs to the slaughter. The banishers are here. Surely, with their expertise, we may yet prevail. Then I shall leave you in your expertise in ghosts and devils to find out. My expertise in blood and battle is of little use. Mistress Duarte, if I can be of service, you may visit me at home. On the other side of the street, as it were. Well, Governor, shall you leave or shall you so stay? They just waited for us to show up and they're like, okay, cool, bye. For myself, I'll stay. <clears throat> Our company has suffered terribly. But we are worth saving. And now that you are here, save it we shall. Please, accept my sincerest condolences for the loss of your friend. We feel the loss of our minister so very keenly. Charles Davenport was a man of great knowledge and devotion. The pride, indeed, of New Eden. It discommodes me greatly to remember how he found his body in the cemetery. Indeed, it distresses me yet further to tell you that we do not know what so tragically cost him his life. Ooh, okay. What do you think happened? What do you think happened? I could guess to little use. It is evident, however, that Charles's unexpected death is linked to his investigation of the curse. In the minister's absence, I try, in all humility, to protect us all, body and soul, from our ongoing peril. You see, in my youth, I, too, was something of a demonologist. Rather a good one, if I say so myself. We're not demonologists, and neither was Charles. Is his widow Esther taking visitors? The widow Davenport is at home, and does not much venture out. Her house overlooks the dock. I offered Charles a home with a view across a pretty meadow, but he refused. He preferred the village life. Speak to her, if she'll see you. But she knows no more than we do about how her husband died. I'll see about that. Yeah, I'm loving the writing so far. I love the character designs. And the voice acting's great. Um... You're a demonologist, you say? I am that. Like my father was before me. Faith and science 
are our twin compasses, you see, to a deeper understanding of the secrets of God's green and pleasant land. <laughs> Somewhat of a scientist myself vibes here. And what have your compasses told you about the curse? They have told me... They have told me that Reverend Davenport was better placed than I to solve our problem. Which is why you're here. We agreed it. I shall stand for the company, I said. As the moral authority, the anchor, and the rock. As Charles and his banishers lift the curse. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, I didn't really hear or see much of this game before it came out. Playing it now, I'm kind of glad that I, I didn't really know what I was getting into, aside from just that I generally enjoy don't nod games, right? So <laughs> I was like, a don't nod game in this setting, um, you know, with like a ghost sort of theme, that sounds cool. Uh, but I, I, I love when companies decide to do a totally new original story, right? Like a, a totally new property. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's neat, you know? Perhaps we may come to you for advice. Please do, madam. For I would be only too glad to give it. Why is the town, Why is empty? town so empty? Of those who did not die, we are the few who stayed. Though our motivations may differ, all who remain have shown extraordinary faith and courage in the face of our adversity. Will they return when the curse is lifted? I fervently hope so. They have homes here. But we sent the children away some time ago, and many could not live with their absence. If we do not resolve this situation quickly, the community of New Eden shall be broken. Perhaps forever. Those who left, where did they go? Boston, outlying settlements. Anywhere, everywhere. Although, as you may have heard, the weather has likely closed the roads. Some believe the pass through the dark woods offers salvation. I do not. I believe we must stand our ground. Hmm. What can you tell me about the curse? I can tell you that it has been our misery for many long months now. And I can tell you that it worsens by the increment. First, there was pestilence and disease. Then came the nightmares. Then came madness. In the end came death. And death remains. But in all honesty, <laughs> I think the weather is the worst part. This never-ending winter hangs heavy on us all. Worse yet, it traps us here. What did Charles know? What did Charles know about it? What had he learned? Tragically, I had not yet had the opportunity to discuss his investigation. And his passing now excludes the possibility. Our late friend Charles faced a Herculean task and acquitted himself with honor. You will have to do far better than that. I'm afraid. Our contract stands. If you'll have it, yes. Our contract stands. For Charles. All right. For Charles. Thank you. We have what we need. Then I wish you success. By my instruction, a room is prepared for you in the old schoolhouse. I'll be here if you need me. Time to steal some stuff. What you guys got? I think there's crafting in this game. I keep picking up leather. <gasps> Why can't I get closer to you? 
It's like, babe, stay professional. at the last town hall meeting. As announced at the last town hall meeting, I hereby close the King's Arms Tavern, leaving the key to the selectmen. There shall be no ale sold nor drunk until the curse is lifted and I return. Hmm. The storerooms are locked and so are the bedrooms. God bless. What if I pick a lock? All right, come on, boo. Compass Damn indicates it, the direction and distance. Those are cursed sea storms. If only we'd been here earlier. No, no. But as Charles would say, another day, another soul to save. These people have no idea what they're up against. Fungus. That's just in a bucket out here? Damn. He slept for fear you would not come. I'm at a loss. Would God even allow me to drag you into these... these dark times? Esther, you're not alone now. We're here. I'm so sorry we didn't get here on time. Truly. I know. Charles kept saying it. Have faith. They will come. If only he had kept his faith himself. What happened to him? Poor Charles. Just one more victim of the curse of New Eden. You know how he is. Was. Restless. Impatient. It's not that he gave up on you, his friends. But that he could wait no more. I believe he tried to lift the curse. I too have questions, but I have no answers. Nor do I now have a husband. What can you tell me about the esteemed Governor Haskell? Fairfax Haskell is well read and educated, but at times his back can be too stiff. He shares Charles' interest in the unknown, but his passion seems less than practical. He's an academic. Still, good to know our patron has some understanding of our work. We met the captain, too, along with the huntress, Thickskin. Do you know them? I find Thickskin knew Smith's manner a little frightening, but I think she has a good heart. A fine hunter, by all accounts. Captain Pennington comes with a reputation for soldiering. He comports himself with a wry dignity, but I suspect that beneath it all, he's just... sad. Charles thought so too. 
There are wounds beneath Saul Pennington's armor, he said, that time and God have not yet healed. How were things, you know, before all this? Before the curse? It was a busy and exciting time. Charles immersed himself in the community here. He had a hand in everything. The people came to rely on him. I'm sure they look to someone else now, but I can't imagine it's the same. Is there anything we should know about? Lord, deliver me, for I cannot endure this. I cannot endure it, and Charles does not deserve it. Anything at all, Esther. Please. I have felt Charles present about the house. His ghost lingers. He needs help. If he's here, I promise I will know no rest until he has his. You can count on us. We'll start with the house. Charles's papers are gathered in his office. Take what you need. Thank you, Esther. Oh, oh portrait? Oh. Seeing her husband's ghost, grieving widow Esther Davenport was deeply distressed. Intent not obtained. The once joyful and educated good friend of Antea and Red is now a young widow who has lost her anchor and drifts unmoored on a sea of mourning. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. We'll take a look around, if that's all right. <laughs> There's like a detective element to this game too, which is cool. May I be of any help? You stay put. We'll find the way. I've unlocked your first hint. It contains important information about the person. Refer to these hints at any moment through your haunting cases. My dearest Charles, how delighted I was to read your words. It's always a pleasure to hear from you and to know that yourself and your beloved Esther are doing well. I've contacted our brothers in London. Unfortunately, we could not find anything in our archives that matches the description of the events you've experienced in New Eden. Be that as it may, pestilence and never-ending winters are phenomena perhaps too broad for us to pinpoint the exact cause. I can give you no better answer. Be it sorcery, the presence of an ichor, or something else entirely, we cannot say. All I can do is invite you to continue your research and to take note of all of your observations. Our Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stoll has so little presence in the New World. Any new information shall be precious indeed. Please stay safe, my friend. I didn't know Elnor and Charles were still in touch. The St. Paul Brotherhood is a tie that binds. Charles was so eager to continue his research here in New Eden. If only we had known what would befall us. Okay. A new Scotch tune in G major. Purcell, could you find nothing better? These days, I lack the heart to play. I can't believe you brought your piano forte to New England. It cost a fortune. But you cannot part a pianist from their beloved keys. Esther, some food and ale for you. Sorry for your loss. Your neighbors hold you in their hearts. A study of H. Purcell's Chacony? I'm so sorry. In G minor for strings by E. Davenport. Sadness in Interval or a Study of the Aeolian Scale by Heinrich Pietri. This is Charles's. It's like he never left. Have you received other visitors? Most dare not leave their homes. Although Mr. Bachelor came to see me. That was nice of him. My sweet Esther, I was down, and yet you were there to support me. You are an angel from heaven to help me in my dark mission. You are the light that guides me through the darkness of the invisible. And yet I feel so sorry for bringing you to this tortured land. You know well that things are not as they should be in New Eden, and I am sorry to have you by my side, for I fear for your life. 
I wish we could have found a quiet corner of this land to raise our children, but I fear a curse. I think we should leave, or perhaps you should go ahead while I defend our home. Think about it, for I cannot bear the thought of darkness taking you away from me. How pleasant to see these old, familiar things from your house in London. That porcelain saw many a dinner-turned-lecture with Charles. I miss him so. So do we, Esther. My beloved Esther, how I long to hold you in my arms. The announcement of our marriage was to, to my heart as a delicacy on my palate, a sweet of which one cannot tire. At last we shall be together and together forever and ever until the day many years from now when we are old and at last death separates us. Only death can extinguish the love between us, and I'm sure that not even death can undo the tenderness I feel for you. I want everything to be perfect for our marriage. I will make it so. I will write to you every day until the blessed moment when I can finally shed the weight of letters and tell you in person every day how I feel about you. My sweet Esther! I cannot tell you how much I long to get home. This work in the mystical Scottish Highlands is exciting. I can't argue with that, but I miss the sweetness of our home. However, I know that the few months I have left away from your loving arms will be of great benefit to me. Through this experience, I will increase my knowledge. All this I do to protect you from those dark worlds that swirl around us. It is your love and trust that pushes me into these mysterious entrenchments, that pushes me to do my best. It is for you that I do this, for when I can see the pride in your eyes, then I know what role I play on this earth. I know that I can be stronger, that I know I can do anything, as long as you look at me with that spark that is only yours. Damn, Charles knows how to write a letter, dude. Where are you staying, my dears? The governor had a room prepared for us in the schoolhouse. The schoolhouse? Wouldn't you rather stay here? You'd be more com- Charles is still here and Esther is completely distraught. She lost him and now he's back, a ghastly figure. It must be unbearable. None on the side of the water and few on the other know that I came to New Eden as a minister in order to pursue research to the New World on behalf of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stoll. What strangeness I have found. There are ghosts here, yes, old and innumerable, but they are quiet. I shall never say the word aloud, but I suspect there to be witches, and if I find one, I shall very much like to ask her for her story. Todfrey de Toten. A cult book. Balthazar Hans Frenhofer. Okay, that's actual story stuff, so I'll do it last. Theological book. Formicarius. Fortalitium Fide. Theological book. Remember when he started to wear these, to look wiser and older? <laughs> he was hiding his hair loss. Faith always was his beacon in the darkness. In people as much as in God. He's a good man. I can still picture him crafting your very first Bane ring. You sound much more fond of the moment now than you were back then. Bit green for an actual haunting, you said. <laughs> you were. Still, you did all right. A precious king from a chess set protected by a glass dome. That's from the set he taught me with. I'd know it anywhere. Did he keep it to remind him of his favorite? Or to remind him that he had yet to beat me? that to like pinpoint stuff let's see when I say my bed shall comfort me my couch shall ease my complaints then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions so that my soul chooses chooseth strangling and death rather than my life she comes to me in dreams Charles's notes mention Job chapter 7 verses 13 to 15 I'll look for that reference Red, you dropped something. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
What do all these dreams have in common? Are they the promise of a doomsday or the nightmare coming? Visions, foreshadowing. Is someone behind this? Who is the real target and what caused this anger to burst forth? I need to know how it gets into our heads. Sleep no longer offers rest and this cannot perjure. These notes are erratic ramblings. Charles was worried about the curse plaguing the settlers' dreams. How malicious is this curse tormenting people in their beds? Remember the teaching of my masters. May God bless their souls. Against the threatening unknown, when the common knowledge is not enough to understand a situation, the sagacious and pious man will wisely turn to the very roots of his art, the words, their meaning, and the power hidden in each of them. Nightmare has nothing to do with a nocturnal female horse, as in the French cauchemar or the German nachtmar. Mare here comes from 12th century Middle Dutch and means ghost or demon. A nightmare is not a puny fiend sneaking into the bedrooms to suffocate the dreamers, but one of the rarest and most powerful spirit defined by its only purpose, to spread its insidious and unforgiving wrath upon any soul, uh, on any living soul it may reach. According to my research, no occultist ever successfully banished a nightmare, but why? Could a nightmare be more than a ghost? I am afraid so. I remember a disturbing poem I read in London in my younger years about the terrifying abilities of such entities, supposedly able to penetrate the dreams of its targets, to influence their thoughts and perception, make them endure their worst fear, able even to bend the distance or alter time, creating tantalizing, personalized nightmare its victims can't hope to escape from. Such a petrifying concept. I pray God with all my heart and soul that this is not what has risen upon us. How would we then escape despair, death, and doom? I need more information, but where to find them? Wiggles eyebrows. Silver brooch habitually worn by Charles. Charles always wore this brooch. His things are untouched. Nothing. So moved. Sorry, babe. So sorry, babe. Remember how they used to argue about books we hadn't read? Like we weren't there? Oh, you actually listened. I'd always let my mind wander. Children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Psalm 127, verse 3. Three drops of lavender oil and chamomile infusion before sleep. Wintergreen to rub between palms and behind ears three times a day. If restlessness persists, use lemon balm. For the nightmares, maybe. My dearest sister, Charles is dead. I cannot tell right from left. I cannot tell which day it is or how long ago my Charles departed. My world has come undone. Nothing happened as it was supposed to. I could not attend the burial, the shame of it. How I have failed my dear husband. I just could not find the strength to leave the house and walk to the place where Charles died, there to see him buried. Lord, have mercy on us and guide our friends to us before it is too late. New Eden will not last much longer without my beloved husband to protect it. I do not have any words left in me, but I thought that you, who loved him so, should know of his passing. Esther couldn't attend Charles's burial. Poor woman. That's terrible for her. Esther never got to say farewell to Charles. I could have made him manifest. Now that we know why he might be back, we should go investigate the cemetery where he was found. So it's, okay, so it's not like you like mind palace anything. It's that you find the right information to come to the conclusion you need to progress the story. Esther, I'm sorry to trouble you once more. How may I help? Has the curse brought with it nightmares? Yes. 
I've had nightmares. I suspect we all have. Charles warned that something was stalking our dreams. That it had a use for us. That we needed to fight it with all God's might. But now Charles is gone and my nightmares have changed. In my sleep, I see my husband falling, screaming into the abyss. All hear him, none respond. He plummets on into the bottomless pit. Poor Charles. With all that's happened, how are you bearing up? This all feels so unreal. Just one more nightmare from which I cannot wake. It seems so now. But that will change. I promise. Was this something I should have done differently? <laughs> Did I fail him? Did I fail Charles? None of this is your fault. I do not want to believe he is gone. He cannot be gone. I do not permit him to be gone. You're in pain, and that might have brought him back. Maybe he lingers because you suffer. We'll do what we can to ease your pain. And we'll do what we can for Charles. We must make our way to the cemetery. Please be careful, dear Antea. If I lived... The reason I laughed earlier was because somebody in chat wrote Body Check's husband and it made me laugh. Um, if I lived in a world... Where... Um... There were whole ass ghosts all over the place, right? Um, and I knew ghosts were real, and I knew that they could be like that that people's spirits, spirits, that people's spirits could be like trapped in order to haunt. I would not be in my house saying things like "I won't let him go," <laughs> bro. What will you do for my Charles? She's the problem. If he's present, we'll find him. Then we'll ask him what he wants us to do. Must I see him too? First, let's find out what happened. After that, we'll see. Best get started. Time may be against us. Hi, Summer. This game is so intriguing. You'll be all right. I'm I doubt super it. into it. But I'll do my work all the same. We came here to help Charles and help Charles with Shell. Time to cut Ask the around. Cemetery. See what people will tell you. I'll go to the cemetery and do the same. Be careful. Hi. You too. Open your map. Boop. Paris's shop. Investigate the cemetery. Lots of smoke. Lots of places to go in this game. Lots of smoke, dude. A new IP with great lore. I know. We love it. Um, also, just getting like jump scared, positive. <laughs> um playing an action RPG and being told, like, yeah, your choices matter, and then having like like investigation detective elements in it that I wasn't expecting. Love that, big fan. Okay, so we wanna go this way. Bye, babe. Kisses. Can I talk to people? I must take a moment by myself. Excuse me. 
Oh, we haven't talked yet. Get out of my way. Nobody's happy. That's so fair. The docks are closed for sabotage by fire. I'll trade to Boston, Marblehead, Salem, etc. is cut until the saboteur is caught. Is the saboteur a ghost? This fire can't have started on its own. Not in this cold. Blossom of London, Blessing Mary Pilgrim, Adventure of Boston, Sea Flower, Two Sisters, Harbor Log. I'm not stealing stuff, you're stealing stuff. Be warned. I need but cry out, and help shall come in an instant. Calm you, sir. Antea Duarte, Minister Davenport's banisher. Oh, oh, of course, I'm so sorry. Poor Reverend Davenport, his death has shaken us all. Welcome to New Eden. I'm afraid you find us at our worst. Clearly. We're banishers. There's nowhere else we'd rather be. And you are? I almost forgot about I the racist. I know, I literally Squire was like... sincere Paris, traveling Homie? merchant, stuck in this cursed place and eager to be somewhere else. You're leaving town? As soon as possible. Did you arrive by sea? A ship lies at anchor in the bay. Perhaps a captain would take me and my wares to safety. The crew refused to dock. And I suspect they'll leave on the next available tide. We rode ourselves ashore. Might I ask where you abandoned this rowboat of yours? What's going on behind Along you? the coast, Sorry. by a path remarkable for its angry spectres and bloody corpses. If you wish to make the sailing, I hope your wares can swim. The nightmares. Do you get them too? Of course I do. Not everyone will admit it, but we all have bad dreams. Of what do you dream? I dream someone watches me sleep. I sometimes fancy she's present when I'm awake. She never speaks, nor moves. She seems to wish me no harm. She just stands there, watching me, waiting, taking my measure. Does she manifest at a particular hour? If she does, I have no way of knowing it. Unable as we are in this interminable grey to tell day from night. Well, there you are. Information on the curse, as per your request. Uh, I won't even charge you for it. <laughs> tell me about the curse, if you will. Well, I'll tell you this. Those who dare defy the curse are brave indeed, and, I fear, foolish. Banishing is a job, sir, and to do it I need detail, if you please. A banisher must have charms, uh, trinkets, I mean, of protection. If you have a surplus, I'd happily relieve you of your burden. Mm -hmm. What I need right now is information about the curse. What have you seen that might help me with my work? I've seen famine, madness, the shadow of early death. Weather, too. So much weather. I mean, I've seen it all before, but never all at once. Here, it's everything, everywhere, hey, and all at the same time. Folks stay indoors, waiting to be told what to do. Waiting to die, really. Ghosts in the making, all of them. Care to trade? Most of my goods are already packed, but I never refuse a deal. Hmm. 
I assume, again, I assume there's like a crafting element to this game. And until I know what I can make and what I need to make what, I don't want to sell anything yet. I bid you good day, Squire Paris. And thank you this for your time. guy carrying around eight pelts. A pleasure, Mistress Duarte. Do be careful. Maybe not, though. Maybe, maybe he was the one who had all that. What's this? More leather, bro. This town got leather to burn. And hoof fungus again. Lucky me. To the Sumatra. A wisp. So close to town. Cemetery is closed by order of the governor. <laughs> Time to fight a ghost, probably. Where are you leading me? More of you? Oof. Down you go. safe here. Most of these people died fighting. Someone didn't want them here. Fungus? <laughs> yeah. As a banisher, you can feel places or objects that have been marked by ghosts. In a close proximity to these elements, your bane rings are triggered and light with an orange aura. Okay. I've seen more graves here than I've met settlers. Many dead in more recent years. Yo, these ravens are massive. Big boys. Oh! Ch -ch -ch Why didn't you wait for us, old friend? I swear I'll make it up to you. Okay, so this is his grave, but this is not where he died. Mm -hmm. 
far as I can go there. Okay. Oh, I can't go back up on that side. I see. I see. Have I been raided? Raid, 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 raid. Oh my gosh. Lana, thank you so much for the raid. I'm so sorry. I'm really zoned in on this game. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Lana, I hope you had a good stream. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we're sponsored right now. We're playing Banishers. Uh, it's been very cool so far. I'm biased. I'm sponsored right now. But uh, it's been really cool. There's, It's like an action RPG with like like a detective, like ghost story sort of thing going on. Uh, so yeah, it's been fun. If you decide to stick around, I hope you have a nice time. No worries, stream was great. I'm so glad. As someone who's not sponsored to be here, I'm enjoying the story and the characters. Thank you for the follow-up, I appreciate it. Okay. Well, I'm just looking at everything other than what the game wants me to look at. <laughs> and now we're here. Alrighty. Okay. A memory lingers here. I might be able to reveal it. <gasps> Form a ritual. Yeah, dude. Oh, I need pyrite. You must gather the necessary resources. Mixing oh. pyrite with those plants I found should work. Okal dokal. Here we go. That's all I need. Oh, really? I'll take more. Just for goofies, you know. Uh-oh. Oh, come on, man. Ah, what are these? Yuckums. Oh, you are little, you're little guys. I didn't realize you were little guys. I thought they were like orbs that had been shot at me, but then they were slurping, you know? Oh my god, so much pirate. Um, I don't want to jump down there yet. No. Okay, let's do a ritual. Okay, next, to reveal the memories, perform a hearkening ritual. Let's do it. In each stain hides a story. In the name of the Lord, I command you. Be gone from this place! You do not command me, clergyman. Who are you, ghost? Unveil yourself! Well, since you ask so politely... <laughs> Who are you? I am everything you've ever feared. Be gone. You have no shell, no ties, no purpose. No, but neither do you. <gasps> It really is that simple. He just tried to fix it, but couldn't. And she killed him. Damn it. That thing he faced. What was it? Charles's Bible found half buried in the mud of the cemetery. Opened at Job 7, 13 to 15. 
And I said, my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaints, and thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions. Right, it's the same passage that we saw in his house. This tie is doused with the essence of Charles's ghost. After a closure performed by Antea, the bond, the bond between ghost and the world will be severed for good. The tie that binds his ghost. With it, I can make him manifest. Back to his grave, then. Now is a good time for we old friends to talk. We've come too far, Red and I, not to see you one last time. Your pupil has become the master. If we fight, I'll beat you. Come on, Charles. Join me now. I know you're here. I know you're here. You know me, ghost. I only wish to talk. Esther worries. Antea. Here. At last. Oh, poor Esther. I'm so sorry, my friend. So sorry for us all. Looks different than what happened? Than... What's going on here? Sad to say, dear friend. I made a mistake. And it cost me my life. Is Red with you? There is no time to waste. Do you know how this curse began? What prompted it, I do not know. Nor do I know when. Many months ago, certainly. But I do know this. This nightmare chose New Eden for a reason. So... A ghost. This one is different. Implacable. Very clever. Many magnitudes more ferocious than a spectre, and just as relentless. He looks younger, I think is, is what it is. He looks way younger than I thought he was going to be. Why did you not wait for our help? The threat was rising. Despair growing. There were so many dead, Antea. So much sickened flesh. So many afflicted souls. There was no more time. Before you died, you investigated the curse. What did you learn? That our enemy is deceptive and merciless. That we should not underestimate its power. We? I am dead, dearest Antea. But I am a banisher yet. I may still teach you. If I allow you, which I do not. <laughs> and no thanks. Do not repeat my mistakes. If a nightmare curses New Eden, you need all the help you can get. Its presence felt strongest in the meeting house. Perhaps the light of God there forced it to fight its ground. I had the building closed. The worst of the malevolence is contained. But it won't stay locked up for long. I thought nightmares were a myth. A nightmare is the rarest of ghosts. A powerful, insidious spirit, birthed by tragedy most dreadful. How do I banish it? There is meager wisdom in the texts. What little there is says it cannot be banished at all. If it's a ghost, I can banish it. You took notes, I suppose. Where might I find them? 
They vanished. <laughs> In the days before my death, perhaps I mislaid them. Which is not like me. If you find them, mm. read them carefully. Someone took Perhaps them. I missed Esther something. Got rid of them. Something important. We'll banish it, Red and I. Our good friend's death shall not go unpunished. Be warned. This nightmare is too angry to be persuaded. And too powerful to be destroyed. Your death pains us greatly. Your return pains me too. I know. For my part, I'm glad to have seen you one last time. To have had the chance to warn you. How did this nightmare kill you? I believed that I could come to the cemetery and make it manifest. To my initial delight, it worked. I now suspect it came by choice. It seemed amused, as if it were a pleasant game to weigh my measure as a man. How does its malevolence manifest? It poisons minds and sickens bodies. It draws specters to it and sours the weather. It delivers nightmares to one's sleep. For a time, screams tore through the night as folk awoke in terror. When it appeared to me, I did not see its true face. But I heard a woman. She was... Love. I felt her gaze. My heart froze. I died. The spirit is vengeance pure. The ghost of one who was terribly wronged. I've heard your warning. You can go. No. I must remain. Esther needs my protection. My flock needs me too. You know how this works. You know I won't allow that. I am still myself, Antea. With time, I'll grow stronger. I can help you. The longer you haunt Esther, the hungrier you'll be. You know this. This is different. I'm the Reverend Charles Davenport, your friend and mentor. You know me. You know I am a good man. I knew you. You were a good man. Now you are a ghost. And I cannot let that stand. But I swear it, the nightmare will end, and Red and I shall do the ending. Charles Davenport was a good man, and a fine mentor. And you a fine student, though you took a hard line. I never could unpick that from your character. Has life tempered you since? Life has tempered my steel. Death and the manner of it has made you the very thing you once opposed. Goodbye, Charles. Peace on your soul. Remembrance on you. Antea, wait. Wait for what? We're banishers. Death to the dead. Let Esther choose for herself. Don't know. Oh, Lord. What? Please don't ask me to do that. Esther, my good wife, and the very best. I miss you so. Red? What the- Oh dear what? Lord, Charles, why are you here? Why have you come back? You must leave, please. I must stay. I must protect you. The thing in the meeting house feeds on our torment. I should have known better. I know better now. Antia, give Charlie the ascent he deserves. Charles Davenport, you have no reason to stay. Go. Let Esther grieve in peace. Save her, my friends. And save yourselves. Save them all. 
I thought that was going to be a choice. I thought they were going to ask us if we wanted, if, <laughs> if we were going to keep them around or not. I'll walk Esther home. I'll do it. The women can talk. Uh, then, all the way to the schoolhouse and make the bed. Charles is at rest now. And Tia, she gave him the care he needed. I think an ad has started. So we're gonna do this for a sec here. While ads are playing. I love Antea's design as well. Yeah, the characters in general have been so well designed and the writing is great. The voice acting is great. I've been so uh, delighted with this game. Like I said, I, I love uh, when games incorporate like detective elements, I didn't expect there to be a mystery to solve in this. Um, yeah, it's been cool so far. And I feel like they're also sort of drip feeding the lore in a way that's, or like world building, you know, in a way that's really uh, palatable isn't the right word for it. But you know, uh, sometimes when a story really just overloads you with information, <laughs> the eject button or the move on button. Yeah, so that was interesting, right? So I guess like either you you can you can be banished, ejected, so to speak. Um or or we can open up the door and let you walk out yourself. So I guess that scene sort of established the difference there. Um having his wife show up and be like, "Homie, you got to go." gave him the opportunity to choose to leave instead. Um So maybe maybe it's not that like we were uh, trying to be overly forceful with him, but that if a ghost refuses to go on their own, you have to banish them. So we didn't we didn't have a choice unless he decided to leave. You walk out the door calmly, or you get thrown out. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Yeah, that's what I'm wondering as well. If, like, now that that's been established and we know it's a don't nod game and there's going to be lots of, like, choices and things that affect um, what happened in the game, right? Or, like, different ways that you can resolve things. So now I'm, I'm wondering if that's establishing for us though the different ways that you can resolve... Um, you know, vengeful spirits, whatever. They've now established this, like, nightmare ghost lady. Um, so will we get the option to either, you know, Pokemon battle her until she's weak enough that we can banish her or find, like, engage with the detective element of the game enough that we have the information to help her feel more at peace. I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, for those of you who showed up um, after we had already started playing and after I had already done the blurb and whatnot. Uh, we're sponsored today. If you do exclamation point sponsored, there's a little link that you can click. It's a personal link to me. Um, but we're playing Banishers today, uh, sponsored by Focus. It's the new Don't Nod game. Um, a bunch of people have come into chat and said that they've adored this game, that it's felt really... Um, uh, that they've really gone for like something unique here. Uh, and I've been, I've been really delighted by the tone of the game, how it looks, the characters, 
uh, it's been great so far. So I can confirm that the moral choices in this game are tough. <laughs> Goog. Alrighty. Um, fantastic. What time is it? All right. My Charles. Where do you think he is now? He's... Uh, I don't know. I miss the warmth of his hands. His calm presence in our house. If I close my eyes, I can picture him. He's in a place where sunlight chases the snow away. It is warm and there is fresh milk. The sheets are cleaned and pressed and folded. Nothing can ever be the matter. You're right. He's at peace, and you deserve to rest. Oh, and now we're running. Run home, Esther! I'm sorry. I'll miss him. Dearly. Tomorrow, we'll continue investigating the curse. Good night, Esther. I am glad you are here. Both of you. We need you. Good night, my dear. Good night. I wouldn't even leave my house in this town. Well, yeah, like, um, when we talked to her initially, she was like, oh no, she didn't tell us this. We read this. She didn't, she didn't go to her husband's burial because she like couldn't bear to, to go there and to see him. And like, every, like there's just such a, a terrifying feeling around even leaving your house in this town. And so we had speculated that, like, that might be one of the reasons that he was still around, is that she wasn't there to, like, see him off kind of a thing. Good day to you, madam. Antea Duarte is my name. May I ask yours? Duarte? Duarte? You came with the Banisher, did you not? I, I am, am the, the Banisher. banisher. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you're the face of hope, are you? You're what my tithes are buying. Let me have a look at you. Oh, right. Well, I hope I'm wrong. Bathsheba Ingersoll, or I was last time I looked. Tell me about your store. Why? Would you like to buy some china? Some porcelana? A linen dress? That's about all we have left. You'll be shocked to learn that there is little demand for the finer things in life, and we have next to no supply of the staples. I should have gone when I had the chance. I suppose beneath it all, I'm an optimist. And that makes me a fool. What can you tell me about the town meeting house? The minister closed it down. Said it was dangerous. Imagine. Worship is dangerous now. Do you remember when and why? The when is difficult to say. I admit I've lost track of time with the dullness of the days. It may seem like an odd question, but may I ask if the curse has brought you bad dreams? Every time I close my eyes, I'm in the store. Coins fall from the ceiling, only a few at first. When they hit the floor, they break. Like rotten teeth, or finger bones, perhaps. The trickle becomes rain. A cascade smashing down to flood the store. I try to flee, but the flood rises too fast. I drown in shards of broken bone. There. Aren't you glad you asked? What can you tell me about the curse? Did Haskell not lay it out? We freeze. And at the same time, 
we rot. Minister Davenport said he'd summoned the best banisher there is. Can you lift the curse? In my experience, most curses are actually hauntings. And while ghosts are treacherous, they're not invincible. Well, I'd like to tell you I find that a comfort. But I'm afraid I would be lying. All a very right. good day to you, madam. You're optimistic too, then. Aren't we the fools? Good day, sir. You'll be one of Haskell's banishes, I take it. Ante Duarte. You may meet Red McWraith about the place. Pew Bachelor. The governor had me prepare the schoolhouse for your comfort. It has fallen out of use. Will that be all? Oh my god, who does he look like? actor does he look like? This is weirding me out. <laughs> Where are the children? Several died of fever. We could see disaster coming. We thought we'd have to bury them. Dr. Cox. Who's that guy? We sent From the children Scrubs. to safety. What's that guy's name? <laughs> we sent them away. That can't have been easy. It can't be easy now. No. No, it is not. J.C. McGinley, is that his name? I didn't listen to any of that, but we were told earlier that the kids were all sent away, right? Did you know the Reverend Davenport thought the meeting house haunted? I did know that. To his shame, the late minister ended services and closed the meeting house. No wonder we are where we are. And what do you think sits in the meeting house? Miss, if the devil sits in our meeting house, it means that we, the people of New Eden, have failed to repudiate his works. Obviously. Do you have bad dreams, Mr. Bachelor? <laughs> you don't want to hear about those. Try me. In my sleep, chanting demons defile our precious meeting house and burn it to the ground. Two poor souls are trapped inside. A man and a woman, screaming oaths and curses in strange tongues. I wake with a start and rush to the window. I am relieved to see the meeting house still standing. What can you tell me about the curse? New Eden is scrutinized by God. Better days lie ahead if his servants remain humble and true. Do I detect a note of disapproval, Mr. Bachelor? I was hoping for a warmer welcome. Oh, I don't doubt your honesty, nor your will to fight the devil. But we have prayed for salvation. And, madam, without wishing to offend, you are no angel. Farewell, Mr. Bachelor, and you may wish us luck. I shall not wish you luck. I shall wish you salvation. All right, bye, homie. As banishers, we are no spiritual guides or inquisitors. We are ghost hunters for hire, specialized and sensitive crafters who train hard to protect the livings through our rituals and knowledge about ghosts and specters. We are no cult. There is no hierarchy nor established dogma among us. The most obvious reason why a banisher becomes a banisher is because he or she wants to protect the living from the dead, whatever the reason. We are efficient, adaptive, and versatile. Our community is sparse and nomadic, just like our predecessors were. We wander the world in search of living victims of the dead, cleansing haunting cases using techniques tried and trusted, 
and honed by generations of masters and pupils, releasing or banishing the ghost, rarely blaming the living. Unlike puny sorcerers, we do not waste our time crafting enchanted rifles with the butt, barrel, and stock engraved with runes and other symbols of power for hunting specters or otherwise. Who would wish to depend on a single weapon? Instead, we bring our bane powder, prepared according to recipes handed down from generation to generation, rendering any firearm capable of shooting and damaging a supernatural target, no matter what the ammunition, efficient, adaptive, and versatile. Our knowledge of alchemy and botany helps us selecting minerals and plants whose proprieties, whose, propri whose properties will support our work. We do not waste time in libraries or schoolrooms. We do not waste our time drawing, carving, or engraving complex circles of power because what we gain in power or nuance, we lose twice as much or more in time, risking putting ourselves and those around us in unnecessary danger. Instead, a clever banisher carries stamps in wood or metal with which to mark a door, wall, or stone with the necessary symbol for the appropriate ritual. We wear rings upon our fingers with these symbols, so we always have a range of powerful runes close at hand, as it were, efficient, adaptive, versatile. Thus we prevail, thus we fight, thus we send back the creeping dead where they are supposed to be. Okay, well, so we've now established that there are sorcerers in this world. And they're dumb nerds, and we don't like them. <laughs> hey, babe. We did the right thing. Charles was our friend. I love you, Red McCraith. But? But when it comes to ghosts, your heart makes you reckless. It's dangerous. Were you really about to banish Charles? Charles would have done the same for your ghost or mine. I hope he'd have at least hesitated. Charles was a good man, full of love. Banishing his ghost wouldn't have been easy, but it would have been right. Ghosts only bring misery, Red. Make no mistake, they steal life's essence from the living. Aye. They don't always do it out of malice. If the man... We are banishers. We end suffering for those who live. We bring closure to those who don't. A ghost may suffer too. A sin puts a gentler end to it. But not a safer one. Better to banish and be sure. Would you banish me? If it came to... You'll not escape me so easy. You I would bring back from the dead. <laughs> That's not funny. I'd fill you with fresh essence. I'd give you so much essence you'd return bloated with life. Steal essence from the living to feed my ghost, you with me. He's gonna die in this game. <laughs> death flags, death flags, death flags, death flags. <laughs> He's gonna die and we gotta decide what to do about him. We love him too much. Okay. <laughs> and then I'd kill you again. I'd do anything for you, babe. You're a scruffy-headed lout, Red McGrath, and I will never let you go. Over my dead body, mister. I thought I was meant to be the soft-hearted one. <laughs> you are. I think Charles was right. This thing in the meeting house could be a... How did he call it? A nightmare? I really hope not. Such entities are legendary ghosts, even for banishers. We'll see tomorrow. Now, to sleep. This was a dreadful day. Poor Charles. 
Poor Esther. Aye, poor Esther. Is he having a nightmare? Antea? She took her fire bane. She says I'm the reckless one. Yay, we get to play as him now. Fun. Okay. Where are you? You're hardly in the meeting house, are you? Oh my god. Oof, yikes. Who's there? Antea? Bro. Why would you go up there alone? Open. And here. Don't suppose you specters have seen it. You're the boss, and all. You could have included me. you see? We never stood a chance. Antea, are you hot? Where are you? This is actually Antea. Or am I dreaming still? I'm here, my love. What happened? <laughs> I'm here, my love. How mundane. Show yourself. God came to the man in a dream and said, Behold, thou art dead. But the man had done nothing wrong and said, Lord, wilt thou also slay the righteous? Be not alarmed. I bring you aid. 
There is no aid. There is only dereliction. Where's Antea? What have you done with her? That was Paul's. Lady, if you hurt her... You cling to love, a fool to the last. There is no love. There is only defilement. Get up, Red! He will suffer like I do! We are not your enemy! Santia, if you laid a finger on her... You know what? Come to her aid. Oh, there is no aid. There is oh, only... Oh, retribution. Give him back. How touching. You come to claim your man. You think you love him. You do not. There, in the dark of your marrow, there is no love. Only betrayal. I offer you a trade. He stays and you leave with your life. I'll bargain with no ghost. You have a brain, yet you think with your idiot heart. You're weak. Now, when all is lost. If you do, I'll be waiting. The icy ocean made a diamond from his grief, then buried it in his heart. 
The weight of his failure dragged him down. Outside time, drowning in the gloom, he spoke her name. <laughs> it's the title! We hadn't reached the title yet. Take me instead, he screamed, soundless, to the cold and silent waters. Out beyond the black veil of death, something heard his cries and reached for him. Let her go. Take me instead. Let her go! Ah, you're awake. Who are you? She who rescued you. Tended you for days on end. Weeks, maybe. Weeks? Oh, God. What have I done? Get your strength back before you beat yourself up. She's dead. Yes. That's why you're here. And why I was sent to look after you. Who are you? I feel like we've met, but... I'm sure we have not. I feel like I know you forever. But do I? You're confused. It's normal. You've been near killed by a nightmare, you've lost your beloved, and now you've a witch by your sickbed. Witch? Witch. I go by Seeker. Find the Banisher, said my mistress. Tend him, and answer any questions he asks you before you leave him be. So, how do you feel? Does it matter? <sighs> of course it matters. Means you're alive, and you haven't given up. This nightmare, how it spoke, how it tore right through her. I've never seen the like of it. Few have. Fewer have lived to tell of it. What drew such a powerful spirit here? Who knows? Something awful, I don't doubt. The worst angers rise from the most terrible wrongs. A friend said that. He's trying to warn us. An immutable law. You have wise friends. Who sent you? Her name is Ceridian, and my hands and words are hers. Beyond that, don't burden yourself. Ceridian, this little seeker who asked you to find me, is she? Scots or something? It's Sir Ridian. She's too old to be from anywhere in particular, and while, yes, I found you, she told me where to look. What am I to do now? How do I... How do I do it alone? You're not alone. Have faith. If Sir Ridian had told me more, I'd tell you it. But you must have faith. Faith, you say that you do not know me. Easy said, harder done. What comes easy in life tends not to matter. It's the hard stuff that counts. You have a hole in you, a yawning, grimacing pit in your soul. That's love, that is. 
The hole won't fill because the love won't die. God, what have I done? Here's the thing. Unlike most, you get a second chance. I suggest you seize it. Why'd you pull me from the water? What's your business with me? I have no business with you, but my mistress does. Ceridian says the wall between the living and the dead is under threat. You, it seems, have a part to play. This is mine. You've lost me. No, I found you. I don't understand. But so did your grief. And it demands to be felt. You may think you're done with your ghosts, Red McCraith. But they aren't done with you. I'll go now. Rest. Why ever my mistress saved you, she has good reasons. The best. Where are you going? Home. To Ceridian. She needs me. Where shall I find you if... or when I need to? Maya marshes. Great big swamps other side of the woods. You can't miss them. We'll know when you're coming. Until we meet again, then. That's right, Banisher. Now, turn around. What? I'm leaving. She's Batman. Man, I was so excited to play as Red, and now I'm upset. <laughs> Banisher, if you read this, it means that you have enough brain to know your alphabet. You have not resisted going through what I left behind. You may take whatever you deem useful, since my mistress wants you to live. We shall meet soon enough. Until then, be well. Yeah, I don't want to play as red anymore. I don't know what this is, but I'm staying away from it. Where am I? for me to snag out here. Nah, I don't think we're done with Antea, dude. Too cool of a character, and they also establish that like a ghost uh, can stick Damn around it. to get stronger, right? Oh. So like, I think there's a lot of like. Again, we haven't gotten there yet, but um, I think this game did a really good job of using the Charles Davenport situation to establish a lot of rules. <laughs> um, and I thought that it was going to be a that we were going to have a choice and how that played out and we didn't but i think the uh, i'm glad that we didn't cuz i think it it taught us a lot in like a really short period of time which is great storytelling so we now know based on our conversation with charles that a ghost can stick around and if it does stick around it gets 
stronger. So Charles was like, keep me around. The longer I'm here, the stronger I'll be. I'm still myself. I have my own mind, my own thoughts, right? And Anteo was like, you're a ghost. You'll feed off of the living and you will over time get corrupted, right? So I think that's probably, that was probably foreshadowing to this situation. Red in that conversation was like, I could never banish you, babe. I love you, right? And we're going to go back probably, find Antea. Red's going to be like, yeah, of course you can stick around. Eat, eat, my, eat my living juices. That's fine. I don't mind because I love you and I'm so sad you died, right? Let's, let's kill this thing together. Um, and we're probably going to watch her slowly turn into like a corrupted ghost entity, you know, and it's going to be sad and tragic. This is all speculation. I don't know anything about this game, <laughs> but I, I assume based on what they took the time to establish for us early in the game, that that's probably the direction. What am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, ghosts love living juice, dude. They love it. High right. You know, all the good stuff. time. Threat indicator points to enemies that are out of sight. Red means an incoming attack. Orange means a projectile. Green means an incoming possession. We yeah, okay. Come on, you mongrels. What in the hell am I doing? Am I the last bloody living soul here?
Banishing works on just like alive things. I've okay. warned you. Away with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that they're entirely alive either. They got glowy eyeballs and things. Oh, he's so <laughs> sad. God. What is happening? What? And here? What did I say? that ledge over by the water. And I thought something eventually was gonna lead to it, but I might have missed it. He might try to resurrect her. I, I don't think he's gonna try to resurrect her, but I do think that he'll, uh, maybe that's a choice that they let you have. Like I said, I do think what <laughs> he'll do is so not cold. banish her or like, Encourage her to move on, you know. Who oh, there? It's here. Hook. This is not happening. This can't be happening. And here, call me to you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm here. Lead me to you. Right here, my love, right here. Please. 
miss you. I have you. You have me. Um. What did I no, say, don't chat? Go. I'm here. Follow me. Where are you going? Over here. I have you. I'm right here. Where are you? Where have you gone? Antea! Just stopping to grab some... High right. <laughs> you seem weak. You need rest. I feel hollow. Do not be troubled. How could I not be? To have lost you and found you like this. And you're hungry. That's one way to say it. Yes. What can I do? Charles's Bible, the tie that bound his ghost. Some essence remains upon it. For now, it will do me. did this. I feel better. Look at you. At us. I know. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're back. Truly. The living should not truck with the dead. I've known that since childhood. I learned the hard way. You never told me this. What happened? It was a lifetime ago. For now, it doesn't matter.
okay. <laughs> Um, what's up? <laughs> I'm gonna get through this as, as quick as I can and then wrap up. Um, I had literally, I cursed myself because I had literally just been thinking after this scene, this would be a perfect time to wrap. <laughs> and then Clark woke up because Sherlock scared the shit out of her. <laughs> so what did I miss? Did a lot happen after she touched the, the book? She touched the, the bibble. She touched the bibble to eat it, right? What happened? She implied that she's been in a similar situation in the past. She sucked out the essence. She was a bit alive and then she wasn't. She said she had previous experience with ghosts when she lived. Our wife ate the Bible and got spooky eyes. Cool. Oh my God, no, Clark, shh. Clarky, no. Baby, sleep. Are you still hungry? I'm hollow, as if I were filled with emptiness. So the essence Charles left on his Bible was useless. Consuming his tie did make me feel better. But I'll need more. Much more. We should talk about what happened. After the meeting house, I mean. Okay, we're wrapping up. <laughs> we're wrapping up, dude. My kiddo 
got too freaked out by the freaking cat. And now, <laughs> now she panics if she's alone. So we're, we went way over time anyway, so it's fine. I was having a lot of fun with this game, so I just wanted to play more of it, but we can always play more of it another day. It's no big. Um, yes. Thank you so much to Focus. Focus Entertainment sponsored us today. Um, this is a new Don't Nod game called Banishers. Uh, it's an action RPG, but it's had, like, this really cool mystery and, like, um, some, you know, sort of detective elements to it, this cool supernatural theme. It's been really fun. I think the characters are awesome. The voice acting and writing is really good. Uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. So if you would like to check it out, please, please use my link. Use my link to peep it. It helps me out. Um, it lets them know that you came from me. It's all good stuff. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching today. I will be back tomorrow. Let me read off our activity feed super fast. And then I'll send you over to Sam. Um, boop, boop, boop. Ali Straza, thank you very much for the shout out. Gadget, thank you for the two months. Teox for the 59. Chris Alfayette, thank you for the five. And Von Monocle for the 92. Um, also, uh, uh, Lana Lux raided us. I don't know why that's not showing up in the feed, but thank you so much for the raid, Lana. <gasps> Summer's about to do a debut. Oh my goodness. Let's go raid Summer then. Uh, go say hi to Summer. Good friendo. Uh, go say hi. Spread love, spread joy. I will see you guys tomorrow if you want to come hang out. Why didn't it work? Why didn't the raid work? You already have a raid in progress? Whatever. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you guys around. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.